your heart. You've grown just the way your mama and papa wanted you to. Oh, pretty as a picture. They'd be so proud of you. The way you followed in their footsteps. It's in your blood, honey. Poor daddy and mama. If only they had lived. Oh, but Mama Keys, don't think I mean that to you. No one could have been a better mother than you have. And I feel like you're my very own. You've never given me one moment's trouble. Well, except, except ever since that Bob Jordan moved in here. You've been making soulful eyes, honey. Oh, but he plays so beautifully. And it's singing just does things to me. I know. I'm not saying anything against the boy. But it's like you say. It's in my blood. Dad and Mama were troopers. And so is Bob Jordan. Maybe that's why I like it. You understand, don't you? Yes, I guess I do, honey. <laughs> I declare this ain't getting my work done. What with all these hungry actors? I'd better get dinner ready. Well, I'll help you, Mama. <laughs> you know, the older the great Joseph gets, the more apple pie he wants. He always was the pious type. <laughs> yes, he was. He'll never change. <laughs> uh, look here, Joseph. Uh, let's don't get too mysterious. Because you're going to make somebody hurt yourself in here. I don't like the looks of this place no harm. Huh? Look here, let's forget about that occultation stuff, because I ain't on speaking terms with it. I don't see... I don't see nothing. I don't blame you. I've been looking at him all my life, and I ain't never seen nothing. And first of all, the man is made wrong to start with. Look at him. Look at him. It, it, look at his mouth. Just look at his mouth. Don't look at mine. I said, look at his. Run around with his mouth way down there. Don't you know that's bad to start with? Well, if left to me, I'd put his mouth in the top of his head. And if he should happen to sleep late while he's up front trying to get dressed, 
Somebody can be out in the kitchen wrapping up him a sandwich. After he got dressed, all he'd have to do is to rush out through the kitchen, grab the sandwich, put it on top of his head, put his hat on, and let his mouth eat on the way down to the office. He's running around every day with both eyes in front. If you live in a dark neighborhood like you live right here, one of his enemies slip up behind him and bust his brains out, and he'd never know who did it. If it was left to me, I'd remedy it that. I'd put one eye in the front and one in the back. Because it's just as important to see where you're coming from as it is to see where you're going. And another thing, if it was left to me, I'd equip him with three eyes. He really need them and can use them. I'd put one in the front, one in the back, and one on the end of that finger right there. And that eye could save him a whole lot of trouble, that eye right there. Now, suppose he's walking down the street and somebody says, look, I don't turn that corner. They're beating up one of them around that corner. Naturally, with both eyes in front, he's going to want to see the excitement, take a chance, stick his head around the corner, and he's allowed not to snatch back nothing but his body. But if he had that eye on the end of that thing, he wouldn't have that to worry about. If he want to see the excitement, all he'd have to do is to tip up to the corner, stick that one-eyed finger around the corner, investigate. If you see where he's going to get hurt, detour. That's all he's got to do. Now, Joseph Wood, I want to know, can you look in that bowl and tell me? See, I had $3 when I went to sleep last night, and this man roomed with me. When I woke up, my $3 wasn't there. Now, Joseph, can you tell me who took my $3? If you ask that man that again, I'll knock your block off. Knock you his block off. Knock him into something. Don't tell me about knocking no block, block off, because if you hit me, brother, you ain't going to get it. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Get him, Father, honey. I need you. Look at this wonderful table. Get him, everybody. I mean, how, how do you? How's everybody? How you doing? Hey, son, here's that ten I owe you. It came in handy. Thanks, Bob. How are you coming along with the song? Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, that reminds me. Let's go over there to dinner. Good. Now, uh, you're going to be really too polite. Boy, boy, please. Nothing, that is, that boy is just illiterate there, that's all. I'm, I'm, I'm just getting your book chop, Mama, that's all. Cinderella, sitting in the corner. It's no use, Barbara. I just can't seem to get the punch I want into this song. That is so pretty. I just know it'll be a hit. I think I'll stick to my band and forget about writing songs. Bob Jordan, I'm ashamed of you. You're acting like a schoolboy, and I don't like it a bit. Do you really like the melody? Why, it's beautiful. Now, if you just put some love into the words. <laughs> love. What do I know about love? I've never been in love. Play it again. I like it. Okay. Cinderella, sitting in the corner. You know something, Bob? This is going to be a Cinderella song. Why don't you put something in it about a Prince Charming? Prince Charming? That's a great idea. You mean like this? Looking for a guy, a dear Prince Charming. I'm pining for a love she never had. Great, fine. Oh, gee, we didn't worry about it. Thank you. It was nice of you to invite me here to meet all these fine people. Oh, nonsense. The pleasure's all ours. There's someone wants especially to meet you. She came late while you were playing. Well, I'm afraid I'm, I'm not good company. I, I'm all right at the piano, but I'm a little overwhelmed tonight. I... Oh, silly boy. Don't you realize you're famous? Miss Vivian Marston, allow me to introduce Robert George. Oh. I'm sorry I had to be late. Oh, it was nothing. Just a few popular tunes. Why, you should hear some of the other boys around town sing. And do some of these boys write songs like you do? Sure they do. 
one right after the other. Robert is very modest. I'll leave you two alone to get better acquainted. up so late and staring out that window. Just thinking. Oh, but you should be in bed after practicing all day long. Come, tell Mama Keith, what are you thinking about? Well, I was just looking out at the lights of the big city and wondering where Bob is. Who he's meeting. Yes, we don't see much of him anymore. Oh, I hope success hasn't gone to his head. Oh, he's not that way. Besides, you can't blame him for staying out a lot. There isn't much excitement for him around here. Why, honey, child, you're crying. Here's the joy I get. I'm so happy. He got a break. Yes, and you were responsible for it. Oh, Mama Keith, it was nothing. <laughs> I suppose I should go out and find a job. Now, dear, you have plenty of time for that. But I want to sing and dance <laughs> Yes, yes, I know. The theater again. But off to bed you go, young lady. Oh, she's going to go to bed. I'm not going to sleep anyhow. Oh, you'll sleep. <laughs> Can I sit and read a book? No book reading, young lady. And don't forget, you're not too old to be spanked. I <laughs> declare I have the worst trouble getting my house to bed. Even the great Joseph is up at this hour. Now, there, now. Good night, honey. Good night, Mama Jean. You are next. Your name, please. Ah. Uh, I don't want to examine your tonsils. What is your name? Oh, my name, uh, Ah uh, Fu. Ah uh, Fu to you. That's it. That's my name, Ah uh, Fu. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Are you kidding? I don't get any image. I need another crystal. Sure, that's no good. Four, five, six, no good. Even this one. It's no good. My friend, you must have a very big future. Sure. Me have big future every day. Big phone right. Very, very good. Mm, yum, yum. Even this one only gives a partial and incomplete image. My friend, do you by any chance own a pawn shop? Sure. We got the big uh, hop shop in Chinatown. You know what the three ball he mean? No, what? What does he mean? Uh, two, 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 one. You know, come back. That's a joke, sir. <laughs> How deliciously naive. Oh, it's so warm in here. Let's go on the terrace. Yes. It is a little warm in here. Now, doesn't that feel better? Much better. It was too stuffy inside. Yes, it was. You know, Mr. McMillan, the manager of the Swan Club, is a dear friend of mine. I think I could talk to him. But I wouldn't want to shove Bonnie Ray out. You should think of yourself. After all, I'm thinking of you, too, in this matter. But you hardly know me. And you haven't heard my band. I think I know you well enough. I'm not interested so much in the band. I'm interested in you. I'm certain the Swan Club is a place for you. And I think you can figure on playing there. Robert, Jordan. Barbara, am I glad you're still awake? 
Have I got lots to tell you? What are you doing? Just looking at your song. I got a lot to tell you about that, too. Gosh, I'm hungry. Is there any food left? I think so. Mama Keys always leaves something. Gee, I'm so excited I could hardly wait. Have you got any milk there? Oh, sure, that's plenty. Well, come on, have a sandwich with me. You'll never guess what happened to me tonight. You see me, because I didn't look so good. It's just the way I've always <laughs> dreamed. The top spot in town, the Swan Club. Oh, it's marvelous if it's all true. Tell me about it. I met a very influential woman tonight. She's going to arrange everything. But can you imagine a wealthy and beautiful woman falling for me? Why not? You have everything now. Funny how time changes things. A short time ago, I was desperate. And now the whole world's before me. You deserve a break, too, Barbara. Oh, don't worry about me. But it's only because of the song. And wait till I get that royalty check. I'm going to see that you have your share. Oh, I don't expect anything. After all, it's your song. But I couldn't have finished it without you. It takes a woman for that hard interest stuff. That's the way it's going to be. But it's all out of reason, Vivian. Why should we get Barney Ray's orchestra out? It's a big draw. In my opinion, Bob Jordan will be bigger. In your opinion? <laughs> That's the last. You probably have a yen for it. What if I have? Now listen, Vivian. I'm warning you. You're playing with fire. You're engaged to Ralph Williams. Why is it every new face comes along you've got to fall like a ton of bricks? Let's get this straight, Mr. McMillan. I'm the biggest stockholder in this club. And you know why. Because it's my playground. And leave Ralph Williams out of this. But you can't carry water on both shoulders. Now listen. Someday, Ralph is going to get wise that you're using him for your social ambitions. I'll take my chances on that. Well, it's your money and your funeral. Do as you please. That's what I intend to do. We're putting Bob Jordan and his orchestra in here. Here we are, Matt. Right on time, all ready to sign. Boy, will this be tremendous. A new star, right off the season's biggest song here. Am I a press agent? And how? You know, you're lucky to have a guy like me hanging around the Swan Club. It used to be the Swan Club. We're changing the name to the Cinderella Club. I get it. We feature Bob Jordan's new song here, Cinderella. It's terrific, Miss Marston. A new star in the nightclub heaven. Gee, I, I only hope I'm all you're expecting of me. You will be. We'll see to that. Bob, come over here. Sit down with me. There's some things I want to discuss with you. Come on, Lester. We'll talk this matter over the bar. Yeah, I'll get Cole down to the expense to give me a two-column spread. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, I know. Over. You're terrific. Yes, sir. Bob Jordan and his Cinderella Orchestra. Some published agent I am. Sorry it isn't you, Bonnie, but I have a job to do, you know. I'm not it. And what a great press agent you are. Well, gotta be going. Get down to the Express. Combs is gonna give me that two-column spread. They were her orders. I had to let you go. My band was doing swell here. We were packing them in. She wants him. And what she wants, she gets. Well, she's welcome to him in his one song. That'll be all he'll ever write. When it all dies down, you'll be in here again. You'll get your cut every week, Mac. You know that. Well, I'm already now, Mama Keith. I declare, honey, you sure look lovely. Oh, you look nice, don't <laughs> mommy. All right, now. We'll pick up the men. And then we'll be off. Oh, you look lovely. I know they must be tired of waiting. History will someday prove that I am correct. And I'll bet $10 that history will prove that I'm correct. You both is wrong. I decided it was Father Divine. Shame on you. Shame on you. Why, that's the bottle I keep for my misery. Now get up. Get up and get along. All of you. Get along. Okay. Don't worry about it. But I'll have you taken out of me. Are you well taken care of? 
Why, my good man, what's on the bill of fare? Uh, pretty much of everything. What will you have? Uh, pretty much of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. and his Cinderella Orchestra. Congratulated in picking you. 
I usually know what I want. You're finding very little time to talk to me tonight. A businesswoman has very little time for idle conversation. I see. Does that go for your new protege also? Listen, Ralph. Anything I would discuss with Bob Jordan would be strictly business. I'll put a ring around my rosy and my heart will bust with pride. On that day we sail away and I'll make that chick my bride. I'll put a ring around my rosy and you watch me jump with glee. When I take that girl around the world, all the folks to see. She's got skin like a baby, and she's got those eyes that shine. Now, is she cute? I don't mean maybe. Baby, all that cute is mine. I'll put a ring around my rosy, and you'd better not cross that line. Just read the tag. It's in the bag, cause that doll baby is mine. that skin like a baby and she's got those eyes that shine now is she cute i don't mean me and baby all that cute is mine i'll put a ring around my rosy and you'd better not cross that line just read the tag it's in the bag cause that doll baby is mine She won't last long here with this band. Wait till she gets tired of it. Hey, excuse me, uh, folks. I'm Lester Green, the press agent here. Bob Jordan asked me to entertain you for a while. Oh, glad to know you. Now, this is Bob. How do you do? And here's the great Joseph. The great Joseph, eh? What makes him so great? Well, he's one of the greatest mind readers. I see a nimble brain that wakes fast. A brain that's bursting for more room. I see you. And the background of all of this. Say, you're terrific. Would you like to make some money? I am not interested in money. How much? Now you're talking. Plenty. I've got a thousand names on my mailing list. They'll go for you like a horse goes for carrots. We're having a party here tonight. Come with me. I'd like to introduce you. Boy, am I a press agent. He's going to meet women. Well, what are we waiting for, man? I Come on, now. What's he talking and you can put it down in your newspapers in McCoy. I got noticed because I wouldn't play up to Vivian Moss. That man speaks the truth. <laughs> yeah. always... The boys are taking over for me for a while. I wanted to find out how you liked everything. Gee, you were swell. The crowd has certainly taken you to their hearts. They love you. I always get lost on that last line. I know. I was sort of singing with you. Sort of mental telepathy. You know, I don't know what it is. I can't seem to get that line. It keeps throwing me. Why don't you hold the slipper in your hand? You know, the Cinderella slipper. It would give you more showmanship. And inside of the slipper, you could have all the lyrics written out. Barbara, you're wonderful. Oh, I'm sorry I can't let you have one of mine. They all have dancing plates on them. And Cinderella wasn't a dancer. It's a swell idea. But I believe I'll get it after a while. Waiter. Tell Mr. Jordan I wish to see him. You know, people are beginning to wonder about us and our marriage. First we go through that again. We're engaged. Isn't that enough to satisfy them? The people in my set don't understand. They think we should be married after this long engagement. Come into the office. I want to talk to you.
Well, Mr. Robert Jordan, what do you have to say to yourself? I suppose I'd better let you do all the talking. After all, you are my boss. You can have just as much to say. If you care to. Do you want to? Sure. I can tell you more about Vivian Marsh. She's engaged to a regular guy. She's playing the field right before his eyes. Give me a double rye and water. for the rehearsal. Well, I don't know. You know that Jordan. But the boys now care on Mr. Macmillan. Look out. Here we go. in that paper, Mama Keys. I know what you're reading. Well, I suppose it's just one of those things. Yes. Just one of those things that couldn't be helped, I suppose. Well, after all, she's beautiful and wealthy and bob, handsome. It's glamour. Romance with all the trimming. I don't know why he keeps his room here. He never comes home anymore. Afraid of offending you, maybe. Mm, it's not me he's offending, dear. It's you. Well, I'm trying to make the best of it all. I realized I could have never been the one. You're not so affected as I thought you'd be. I have no other choice in the matter. Besides, I've landed myself a job. A job? Where? At the hangout club. It isn't much of a place, but it's respectable. Mostly musicians. Oh, Mama Keys, I was born for show business. And that's where I have finished, I guess. How do you suppose I feel about all this gossip? You can't stop wagging tongues. Ours is an innocent friendship. Innocent friendship, eh? When people at bars mention your name and point me out as the goat, people smiling and winking at each other when they see me. Do you think an innocent friendship starts all that? It's bad, Vivian. The patrons want to see Bob Jordan, and he's hardly ever around. Well, you're the manager. Why don't you do something about it? Because you wouldn't permit me. You stop me at every turn. Mr. Macmillan knows more about this than you do. Why don't you listen to him? Listen to him? Why, he'd have Barney Ray back in here. And I think I know why. At least Barney Ray showed up. That's more than your lover does. Do you realize what you've said? That ought to keep you quiet for a while. It certainly will. After I inform the newspapers that our engagement is off. You wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? Well, we'll see. What are you going to do? Inform the world that Vivian Marston and I are finished. Ralph, you're losing your head. Perhaps I am. And a liability at the same time. Don't, Ralph. Please don't. I swear to you, I'll stop it. Miller, you can discharge Bob Jordan if you like. Now you're being sensible. Well, here's your band leader. He's no longer our band leader. I don't get it. I do. Bob Jordan is true. Clause 10 in our contract regarding general behavior. I suppose that's because of that newspaper story. Mr. Marsden and I are engaged. Engaged? I never knew. Well, you know now. What about Vivian? Hasn't she anything to say about it? I'm afraid you misunderstood our friendship. Robert, I was trying to be nice to you. But you permitted yourself to go too far. Of all the things that we... Can... I understand. All right, Mac. 
Consider this my notice. I'll give you two weeks' salary, and we'll drop the whole thing. Thanks for the buggy ride. Here's the story of a gal named Lizzie. Here's the story of a gal named Lizzie. She's all right, but just a little dizzy. She clamped on top of her head and fell down up on her head. She's long leg Lizzie. Oh, she's a little dizzy. Oh, long leg Lizzie's the dizziest gal in town. Dizzy Lizzy is no place at all. Sure is. That old gal is so darn tall. Yeah. She sleeps in the kitchen with the feet in the hall. Poor oh, long leg Lizzie. She's a little dizzy. She's a little dizzy. Poor oh, long leg Lizzie is the dizziest gal in town. But Dizzy Lizzie had to cross the river. What she did was make a brave man shiver. Though the river was one mile wide, she stepped across in one big stride. She's long leg Lizzie. Long leg Lizzie. She's a little dizzy. She's a little dizzy. Oh, long leg Lizzie's the dizziest gal in town. Old Lizzie sat one day up on the ground. Yeah. High in the sky, she heard an awful sound. Sad but true when Lizzie rose. What happened? But that thing bumped her around her nose. Oh, long leg Lizzie. She's a little dizzy. She's a little dizzy. Long leg Lizzie's the dizzy gal. Da 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 da. Lizzie's mother had a strange premonition that her child was in a terrible condition. She said, Lizzie, you are my fate. Baby, you're tall as the empire states with your long leg, Lizzie. You're a little dizzy. You're a little dizzy. And long leg, Lizzie, is the dizzy girl. Da, 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 Really a character. <laughs> Will I ever learn to keep my big mouth? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we have seated here at the bar where he usually is. <laughs> Bonnie Ray, a great singer of songs and also recently star of the Swan Club. I'm sure if you make him welcome. He'll give out with a number. What do you say if we give him a hand, huh? I mean, come on, let's give him. Wow, wow, wow. Let's see. Now, boy, do it like we rehearsed it, brother. <laughs> if you'll be so kind. <laughs> If you'll only love me. 
be too. I would count the pebbles in the sand, or even count the stars up in the blue. But I'd love to hold you in my arms. There's nothing else I'd rather do. So if you can make this moment live, my heart to you. I'll give. Then we can say it's such a lovely day. A lovely day. It's such a lovely day. Did you send for the girl like I asked you to? Man, that's in the bag. You sure now? Sorry. Okay. Pete told me you asked to see me. Yes, miss. I'm Barney Ray. I'm opening a new spot. I'd like to have you work with the boys and me. Oh, thank you. But I've only been here a week. I don't think I ought to leave just yet. What can you get here? I know what this place pays. It's one of my hangouts. I'm the guy who uses that sign. <laughs> <laughs> now, with me, you'll have a real job. What about letting me hear you sing a song? I've got a good ballad I'd like you to hear. Okay, let's hear it. Cinderella sitting in a corner Feeling blue and just a little sad Wishing for her guy Charming, I'm pining for a love she never had. Cinderella, try to keep your chin up. Things will have to come your way. Mm -hmm. Cross your fingers when you start to wishing, and he'll come back to you someday. Why must you spoil your pretty eyes by crying? Nothing was ever gained through tears. Cinderella, eh? Wait till she finishes. Watch me have some fun. <laughs> Cinderella, look into your mirror. Don't you see a lovely vision there? So try to smile, but don't act wise. Here comes your big surprise. if I give you my version of that song? Oh, no, not at all. Cinderella looking for Bob Jordan, but she's not the girl that he adores. He started running around with Vivian Marston until her future husband, he got sore. Stop it, stop it! Say, fella, what's the matter? Can't you hold your liquor? What's the idea of sending a girl? Never mind, Pete. 
Why, you cheap chiseler. Bob Jordan's got more ability in his real thing than you've got in your whole dirty makeup. Just because he got himself in a jam, you're gloating. But you won't be gloating long. He'll come back bigger and stronger than you'll ever be. Boy, this shoe is not a lucky night. <laughs> sure ain't, man. Give me a double. Coming up. Boy, I wish <laughs> I had fans like that. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, Mac. Keep cool. But I sent Lester Green to find him. And now it looks as though I've got to send somebody after Lester. Business has fallen off. There's no doubt of it. Lester left since yesterday, and I haven't heard a word from him. Don't worry. He'll show up on payday. There won't be any payday if we don't do business. If I could only lay my hands on that press agent. Give me another drink. I sure need it. Man, after that boring out you had last night, I didn't think you'd show up again tonight. Skip it. This is one of my favorite hangouts. Someday I'll own the joint. <laughs> oh, big shot. Hello, Barney. How are you? Have a drink. I'll take ginger ale. Ginger ale? Get him. <laughs> this is no soda fountain. <laughs> I'm on the wagon tonight. Uh, hmm. Kind of upset your apple cart, didn't you? I guess it did. It was wrong of me. To go in there in the first place. It's really your spot. Sure, it's my spot. Vivian Marston gave you the work, see? <laughs> Rising composer writes one song and gets the squelch elegant. <laughs> it wasn't Vivian's fault. It was all mine. I guess the job was just too big for me. I figured that. You know, experience is the best teacher. And maybe I won't be too cocky in the future. Everybody knows it was a big mistake to take you out. I heard Macmillan was looking for me, but I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Same with me. I drew an advance on my song, but when that goes, I guess I'll have to go back to playing my piano. <laughs> you know, you're not the bad guy at that. When you came in, I figured on a first-class argument. But there's nothing to argue about. You have a reason for being sore. But I didn't mean anything by it. Honest, I didn't. <laughs> you know, Bob, you're not a bad guy at that. I see you're pretty regular. Will you shake? Good. Now, that's what I like to see. Everybody friendly. Hey, Barney. I expected to find you down here, but I didn't expect to find you two shaking hands. Well, we're busy laying off. You won't be laying off long. Macmillan's looking for you, dead or alive. Say, that's great, Barney. That means you go back in. I heard about it, but I'm not sure. I'm dead sure. That's why I'm down here to get you. Now, confidentially, Barney, they want you. And they're still crying for Bob. Now, if I could figure out some smooth angle... Oh, don't worry about me. Just straighten him out. Wait a minute. I got an angle. Barney, you go back to your band. Bob, you be the vocalist. You feature his song. Will that be a stunt? It'll be terrific. Now, I'll tell you how we'll do it. Deke, give us a little drink there. We'll figure this out. Yeah. Now, the best thing for us to do is to get together. Uh, say, uh, huh? do you mind if I get in on this I little... I should say not. not Come on, on in. No, no. I tell you, the idea will kill them. They'll never get along together. But the final decision is up to our largest stockholder. What do you think, dear? Don't dear me. Oh, listen, folks. This is two-column stuff. We advertise for all the women to bring a slipper. Cinderella slippers, Cinderella club. You get it? From these slippers, Bob Jordan will pick one. He invites the owner up to the bandstand. She's to receive a money prize. And if she can sing the Cinderella song, she's given a week's engagement here in the club. Will they go for it? A chance to sing beside Bob Jordan with Bonnie Ray's band? We'll advertise in all the papers. They'll all bring a slipper. And besides, we'll pick 12 of the best dressed couples in the club to act as men and ladies in waiting for Cinderella. It'll be terrific. Am I a press agent? I'm telling you, it's the greatest piece of work I've done since I've been a press agent. You think it's a great idea, don't you? Well, it is. Never been so I'm a press agent. I know what I'm talking about. What do you think of it, manager? Well, what can we lose?
take this over to Junie, my trumpet player, and ask him to put it in the next set, will you? I've been waiting all evening to talk to you. What's the use in starting this all over again? I had to agree to let you go. My reputation was at stake. Okay, let's forget it. Bob, I can't let you go. I just can't. Are you kidding? How many slippers have you got on the bandstand? Bandstand? They're all over the place. But chicks are nutty about this, Bob George. This better be good with all your raving. We have the inimitable Deke Watson and his brown dot. Take it away, Deke. Is it right for me to love you after what you've done? Even though I know you've never really loved anyone. In all my dreams, it's only you. That taunts me every night You're my theme Darling, tell me Is it right? Because of you I've cried Sometimes I've had to lie But little different did it make to you? Please tell me, is it right for me to sit around and hide, hoping someday you'll be mine? Tell me, is it For me to love you after all you've done. Although I know you've never, never really loved anyone. In all my dreams, you seem to haunt me every day and every night. You're my sweetheart, you're my darling. What tell me is it right, baby? Is it right? Because of you, I've cried. Sometimes I've had to lie. Almost died. But little difference did it make? For me to sit alone, my darling, and pine. Cause I love you, no one above you. Whoa, tell me, is it right? Please tell me, is it right? Bobby Jordan, how are you, kid? Fine, boy, how are you? Good I haven't to seen see you since Hollywood. I, oh, pardon me, this is Miss Blazer, Mr. Jordan. How do you do? My, but not, you... wait a minute, I know just exactly what you're going to say. You're going to say, my, hasn't he grown? As a matter of fact, Fred, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, I know it, Bob, I get that from everybody. They look at me and they say, gee, I remember you when you were little David Copperfield and little Lord Fauntleroy with a collar and the long curl. <laughs> Tell me, what brings you to the east? Well, I just got out of the service, Bob. I'm keeping this thing shined up here. That's a good one. Yes, now I'm going to do some personal appearances. Well, where will you be? Well, I'm going to New York and then to Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, the whole circuit, you know. Of course, right now I'm having a little bit of trouble. I'm looking for some good material. Yes, well, that's understandable. What sort of a routine would you do? Well, I don't really know as yet, Bob. I've had a couple of writers on the job. As a matter of fact, I got a script back about two days ago from this first writer. 
-hmm. And he wanted me to do nothing but gags, gag, 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 story after story for about 10 or 15 None minutes. None of that Joe Miller off the elbow stuff. Oh, no, oh. thank you. No, this, this thing was just a whole series of stories. For instance, uh, he wanted me to do a couple of Scotch stories. One about the, uh, the Scotchman who was on the train. He was traveling from Edinburgh to Glasgow. The mm -hmm. train had been out of the station for about an hour, and the conductor came around to collect the fares. Scott looked up at him, and he said, uh, What will you charge me? The conductor said, That'll be five shillings. And the Scotch says, Five shillings? For a wee little ride from Edinburgh to Glasgow, you won't charge me five shillings? It is an outrage. I'll pay you four and tuppence and not a penny more. The conductor said, I'm very, very sorry, sir, but the fixed fare is five shillings, and you'll either pay or you'll get off. The Scotch says, I'll no pay and I'll no get off. And the way they argue backwards and forwards like that, the conductor got absolutely nowhere with this Scott. Finally, he got so mad at him that he picked up the Scotch suitcase and he threw it out of the window. But it happened at just that moment that the train was going over a bridge. The suitcase went out of the window, over the bridge, and down into the water. Scott looked out after his suitcase, horrified. He turned to the conductor and said, There you go, there you go. You're not only overcharging me, you're drowning me fun. <laughs> Where are you killing me? That's another one of those two-for-one things. Oh, huh? absolutely. Yes. That's another Scott story I was supposed to tell about the uh, little Scotch boy who was having a birthday. And his mother said to his father, um, What will we give little Angus for his birthday? Shall we give him a bicycle or shall we give him a tricycle? And the old man said, Let's wait until it's winter time. We'll give him an icicle. <laughs> Now, I'm glad you came in here tonight. That's the best laugh I've had in a long while. Tell me, you being English, it seems that you would naturally give an English gag. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, he did include one English story. This one about the uh, fellow that came into the restaurant and he sat down. The waiter came over to him and he said, Yes, sir, what do you wish? The man looked up and he said, uh, oh, sir, there is nothing I'd really rather have as long as it's on par. The waiter said, I beg your pardon, sir. I said, Look here, there is, I don't argue about it. The is on the whole, whole, whole. Waiter said, I'm awfully sorry, sir, but I. I'm afraid I just don't quite understand what you're saying. Uh, you're British, aren't you? The man looked up and says, British? My dear fellow, if I were any more British, I wouldn't be able to talk at all. <laughs> you're knocking me out. Tell me, Freddie, what did the other writer come up with? Oh, the second writer had a crazy idea. He thought I should come out on the stage and do Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Oh. My dear. You're so right. I was supposed to come out and do this, uh, this balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet. A little vague to me. I haven't had Shakespeare since I was in school. Oh, me too. It, uh, but uh, I, I remember this, this balcony scene. It goes, um... But soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. It is my lady. It is my love. Oh, that she knew she was. Where do you got me? I knew you had it in you. Oh, that's very nice of you to say that, Bob. But I don't think you can just come out on stage and start reciting Shakespeare like that. It just isn't done. But you know, frankly speaking, with a routine like that, all you really need is a musical number to round it out. I think it would be great. You know, Bob has given me a great idea. You know what I could do? You, I just was watching Big Sid Catlett here playing with John Kirby. Oh, sure. Well, now, look, uh, he taught me to play the skins. You remember, you were out on the coast uh -huh. at the time. Uh -huh. And he taught me to play a little mop mop on the drums. I could bring the skins out, play a little thing, a big sock finish, and you all. You had the best teacher in the world. He's great. Oh, he's my boy. He certainly Pardon is. me, Mr. Jordan, but you're wanted on the bandstand now. Good. Freddie, I've got to buzz off. Nice of you to come by, and tell me why, and let me know where you'll be. I certainly will, Bob. It's great running into you again. Nice to have met you. So long. Oh, now, there is a wonderful guy. Well, now, we all know that Cinderella won her Prince Charming through a slipper. We don't guarantee that she'll win a Prince Charming here tonight, but we do guarantee to win a fine prize of $100. Now, how many of you lovely ladies would rather have $100 than a Prince? Now, if the lucky lady can sing our theme song, She'll meet a prince. In fact, she'll meet two of them. Now, Bonnie Ray takes over with the music, while Bob Jordan takes over the job of picking what I hope is the right slipper. Now, don't go away. I've been waiting days for this night. Did you bring your slipper along? Yes, and if he picks me, I'll pass right out of the picture. <laughs> oh, he is handsome. He sure is.
Oh, I'm sorry I can't let you have one of mine. They all have dancing plates on them. Here's your winner. Who belongs to a slipper with a tap dancing plate on it? And here's our winner, pretty enough for any Prince Charming. We'll do it for Keith. I'll arrange to have you married right here in this club. Am I a press agent? Or am I? As usual, there's something always different happening at the Cinderella Club. At this moment, performed before your very eyes, will be the real marriage of Cinderella to her Prince Charming, attended by their ladies and men in waiting, the contest winners. Is everybody happy? That was some cute trick you pulled with that dancing slip. Only in the movies can you get away with that, my God. Surprise! 